welcome, thanks for stopping by. It's time to learn with our friend Clive. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk. Hello, my name is Clive from Clive'sArt.co.uk. Thank you very much for taking up my invitation and joining me in the studio. Yes, today we're going to be doing a moonscape. Yes, stars and skies and all the other things that go with it. So I'm just putting on a blue ground just to get rid of the white. And as I do that, why don't you have a quick look at the canvas and see what colours and brushes we're going to be using in the studio today. So as you can see, we're using paints today by uh, with System 3, which are Dale and Roney paints. Yes, these are fantastic um, paints. I urge you to try them if you've never tried them before. Um, it is a good system. They've also got their own range of brushes as well. And, um, but I'm using all the Dela and Roni brushes with the exception of one or two, which are my own. But um, there you go. Now we've got some dioxazine purple, we've got some phalo blue, and we've got some Mars black, and we have got some titanium white, and that's it. And in the little jars, you've got a little bit of water with some medium mixing flow improver in it. Um, if you want to purchase some of that, please go ahead and purchase some of that if not just use water um, with a little bit of matte medium or glazing medium or whatever you want to put in it um, and we'll talk about that as we paint I've got some flow improver I've got some retarder and I've got another little clear medium there which I use occasionally for my blending techniques I don't always use that might not use that today but it's there in case I need it and I've just got a selection of brushes of um, short flats and I've got a couple of detail brushes one or two little tiny filberts I've got a, a graduate Dale and Roney um, script lining brush and I've got an angled shader and that's it. Okay, so that's out the way. I've got some kitchen roll. I always use kitchen roll and um, I've got two pails of water underneath me. I've got some one with warm water in it, one with cold water in it because that's what I use to wash my brushes. So I'm just going to be using um, a short flat. This is a System 3 by Dale and Roney. I've pre-soaked my brushes in some water. This, that, that helps the... Um, the, the bristles that normally if they if they dry one they, they're harder to manipulate on until they get moist and two um it stops them sucking all the moisture out of your paint yes so it's a little tip it helps i take my hat off because it's quite warm and i don't know if you can hear but it is raining again in wales it really is yes now i'm just going to go into a little bit of moisture i say moisture instead of water because i know a lot of you put additives in your water to stop the underbinding and paint because if you look at the manufacturing rules even with the dale and roney um, system three paints there is the between a 30 and a 45 percent um over thinning so if you, if you over thin your paints more than that there's a tendency that they may break down but you need to read the technical data so i suggest you go onto the System 3 or Dale and Roney onto the System 3 and see what they actually say if you're going to be using these paints but there are other paints on the marketplace as well. I'm using a pre-stretched uh, double primed canvas which has had a uh, double priming of gesso myself and that's a 30 by 40 centimeter that's European if you like me or 15 by 12 canvas. You can use canvas panels, you can use you know, masonette panels, you can use cardboard, whatever you want to paint on. You can paint on the kitchen floor if you want to. <laughs> but whatever you decide to paint on, this is what we're going to be doing today. So I've just put a, a quick coat of feel of blue directly onto that canvas just to get rid of that white because I don't like painting directly onto the white. And I'm picking up a bit of moisture and going straight into titanium white. And this is neat titanium white. And we talk about underbinding because if you constantly go in water, paint, water, paint, water, paint, and they say no more than 30 to 45 percent, how can you actually work out that ratio? Unless you added 30 percent water to a, a percentage of paint, then you wouldn't know, would you? So this is what we say. This is why it's it's difficult sometimes to work out that variable, really. So I'm just putting some white directly onto the canvas. I know it looks a bit strange because I put a bit of blue on there and I'm going directly and putting white on top of it. But this is this is not gesso. This is titanium white. This is acrylic white. Now I'm going to go straight into a little bit of dioxazine purple and a little bit of 
phthalo blue and I'm mixing those two together so I got a nice purpley blue colour. There we are. Directly onto the brush. And I'm going to start in this top corner and I'm going to go into this pattern with my brush across the top. So that's the pattern that I'm going to be doing. And I'm going to be moving that down quite rapidly down into that white. Now you can see the colour that dioxazine purple and phthalo blue is mixing into that white that I've already put on the canvas and it's developed a lovely, lovely purpley blue colour which is what I'm looking for because I'm thinking of a night sky and I want it quite dark at the top but we can increase the darkness in one minute. I'm just going to bring down this colour down here. I'm going to add a bit more white to my brush. I'm just taking it to the one side because I don't want to contaminate all my white. I'm adding a little bit more white, keeping that colour on my brush. I haven't washed my brush yet. And I'm bringing that down like that. Now what I'm going to do very quickly is I'm going to rinse my brush into some warm water, getting all that pigment out. And we'll be talking about getting rid of paint water shortly. But I'm going straight now with a clean brush, straight into strength, straight in, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> straight in, oh, yeah. my tongue gets tied sometimes, straight into some titanium white and I'm going to increase that brightness there like this. I don't want it too white white yet at the moment, but we can be putting more white in in one second and I'm just going to bring that down, bring that down, bring that down down there like that. And I'm wiping my brush, getting all that paint off. I'm not going to wash my brush this time because I'm going to go straight into some dark again. Dioxazine purple, a little bit of that phthalo blue, mixing that onto my brush like that. Okay, and I, not moisture, I haven't picked up any moisture or water or whatever you want to call it, or flow improver or retarder, straight into, straight into neat um, System 3 paint. And I'm going to go into this top corner you can see this paint is a wonderful creamy consistency. It's got, it's got, a, it's, it's, it moves really well actually. It doesn't need a lot of water because it's quite a nice paint. Now you can use any other paint. It doesn't matter. You don't have to have this particular paint to do this particular scene. Whatever paint you've got, you can. If you haven't got any dioxazine purple, you can actually make your own purple by using um, a red and a dark blue, something like a phthalo blue, and then you'll have a lovely dark purple. And if you want it a little bit darker, just add a touch of black to it. So you don't really need the, the dioxazine purple to do this. You can actually make your own purple. So I'm making that nice and dark up in our corner. I'm going to darken that again in a second when I come to actually drying this off, which I'm going to be doing in a minute. There we are. I'm just going to very, very lightly, that edge there, that edge, I'm very, very lightly Remember what I said about tickling the back of your hand? And very, very lightly, it's just caressing that canvas like that. There we go. How lovely is that? Now, I'm picking up another short flat. This has been sitting in my pail um, for a while. So it's nice and soaked up all that lovely moisture. And it's, it's really clean. And I'm going to pick up some dioxazine purple. There, I'm going to bring a bit of Mars black to it under this top edge. So this is my darkest colour, dioxazine purple and Mars black. And then I'm just going to go into this edge and I'm going to increase that darkness there. A bit more black. Because that's the night sky. That's the night sky. It's, it's, it's like dusk. It's just turning night so it's going to be quite dark up there. Now, have you actually seen that? Have you actually seen the star stars in the sky just before it turns dark? You can still see them. You certainly can. And I've seen the moon during the day as well, which is quite fun. Painting a, a landscape with a moon in the daylight. Well, it's been there. I've seen it. So it does exist. Right, I'm going to dry that off very quickly now with a hairdryer. It's going to take a little bit of drying, but we'll see what we can do. I took a fair bit of drying. Now I've actually turned the exposure down um, on this camera, hello, because it, I was having a lot of glare up in this top corner. So I, I've been played, I played around with the lights, and I turned the exposure down. Um, 
in between drying this off because I, I, I dried it, let it cool and then dried it again. But it looks quite nice now, so I'm happy to go into the next stage. Um, again, I'm picking up some kitchen roll. Now, I'm also going to get some titanium white onto my brush and bringing that up to there. Bringing a little bit of this phyllo blue into that white. And I'm going to bring that down there like that. I want to brighten this bottom off a little bit like that. Just bring a little bit more phyllo blue into that. I want it a little bit bluer. I don't want it. I don't want it purpley. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm going to bring bring that up like that. I'm going to bring a little bit of um, moisture to that, taking the excess off, and I'm just going to bleed that. My canvas is moving. So we just fix that. Get a little bit of tack. There you go. Okay. Got a little bit of tack on that then. Sometimes it moves. I don't know if you can hear the rain. This it's quite strong tonight out there. I'm just bringing this lightness up. I'm washing that brush very quickly. Getting a little bit more of this blue dioxazine purple mix onto my brush. A little bit of white to it. And I want to bring that in. Let's put a bit more of that colour. I'm going to bleed that in. If you're very, very quickly, very, very quick, you can get these colours to merge together like that. It takes a little bit of practice. It takes a little bit of practice to get this blend. But that's what we have been practising for weeks, is blending. If it doesn't run, just a little bit of moisture. Dioxazine purple and phyllo blue with a, just a touch of white just on the edge of your brush like that and blend that in to the sky like that but still wet you need to bring that down don't worry too much about that you need to get this blend right into the sky area there like that little bit of practice don't worry if it's a little bit streaky that's okay that works for the purpose a little bit more white bringing that in that's going to bleed then and blend into this whiter section down there like that. Now we've got this lovely looking misty sky. And what we're going to be doing in a minute is just bringing in a few wispy looking clouds. So I'm going to just get rid of my dirty tissue paper. I'm going to wipe my brush clean like that. Picking up a little bit of white just on my brush. And now, take the excess off, using that edge, I've, sh I've put it to a, a chiselled it to a chisel point. They are nice and sharp. I'm very, very lightly, very lightly going to put some whispery, streaky little cloud formations in. Practice this. If, if, if you're a little bit nervous um, to do this straight off, then get a small bit of cardboard or something like that. And just practice the painting on that first. Use some really cheap bargain discount dollar store pound shop type of paints and just practice to, to, till you get the blending techniques right. Just practice a bit more white on my brush and bring in, in some more little flecks of distant, distant clouds like that. Now, I don't know if you remember, but I did a night sky painting um, on, a, on, on a weekly, I, I done a seven day challenge and please check the i cards out by there and the actual lesson of the night sky painting is in there so um i just thought i'd i'd bring this up and and to date and just put a couple of extra little things and bits and pieces into it but this is done in exactly the same way now i'm i'm picking up a very distressed very distressed um bristle brush which i've cut like that and cropped and chiseled now i'll put that video in the iCard as well so if you want to know how I did that um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up a little bit of water or medium mix flow improver or whatever you decide to use as your agent to thin down your paints whatever you decide this is your paint then you decide straight into some white you can use a toothbrush for this um, I won't use my toothbrush because I've got to clean my teeth after <laughs> 
So using the toothbrush, let me check. Did I put that camera on? I did. Okay, and then towards you, bring the your thumb towards you, not away from you. If you push it away from you, we're going to be covered in paint. And then very, very lightly, flick some stars on to that sky. And don't forget, you can get little tiny ones down here. And you will see these even if there's clouds in the sky. You certainly will. Well, I can see them in Wales anyway. So let's just put a little cluster, get a bit, a bit closer, put a little bit of a cluster like that. There you go. And if you wanted to, you could get a little bit of that phyllo blue onto your brush. So you've got a couple of bluey type of speckly stars so they look because they're darker they're going to look as if they're really 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 way 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 in our cosmos so we've got a couple of purpley type of stars like that don't make them too dark oh they look like black holes <laughs> but you get the gist of it there we are, lovely, lovely way to actually do a night sky. You can do a night sky on any type of effect using that technique. Now, there you go. Now, I'm just washing my bristle brush because I won't, I won't be using that fan brush now again for a while. I'm gonna pick up a half short flat. Again, this brush is available from Adela and Roni and um, it's been pre-soaked. Now I'm going to pick up a little bit of titanium white. I'm going to bring brush, take my brush very, very lightly through that dioxazine purple. Look how small of a mount that is. Can you see? Tiny, tiny little, tiny little bit. And it's just going to rub that into that titanium white like that. And I'm going to load this brush. Load this brush. Now I've got to make a decision. I've got to make a decision. I have got to put a moon in here because... I've got to put a moon in here and I'm going to make a decision where I want to put that and I don't really know but I'm going to push my brush on to the canvas like this and twist and spin twist and spin that brush and you'll get near enough a full accurate circle to smooth that off a little bit like that and that's all we need to do with that for the moment we've got to let that dry if you want to know what short flats do, please check the iCards. There's a lesson there showing you um, a few tips on gesso, a few tips on underbinding, a few tips on um, how to use these short flats. And I'm sure you will find hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of ways to actually use these brushes correctly. Now, I'm looking at my sky and I'm going to pick up a bit of this dioxine purple. A little bit of that phyllo blue I'm bringing that there I'm bringing some titanium white to it and I want to make a nice nice pale color like that yes nice pale color I'm taking the excess off my brush a little bit more white and I'm just gonna try that onto my canvas that's quite nice so let's put a nice Let's put a nice mountain range, I think. Let's put a nice mountain range. Now, I did a lesson a couple of weeks ago on showing you perspective and distance in, in a painting. Let me just get that muck off that brush. And I've done a series of mountain shapes on canvas showing you how to develop distance. And I'll put that lesson in the iCard as well. There we go. So I'm using all my lessons and I'm bringing all these lessons together for you and developing this lovely scene. And let's put that down like that. Let's put a little bit more blue to it. Put a bit more blue to it because it's a little bit white and as, as normal I talk too much. But there we go. And I want to thank you for today for actually coming and joining me in the studio. It's nice to have your company here. As you know, I normally upload on a Monday, a Wednesday and a Friday. So if you've missed any of my videos over the last couple of weeks, or if you don't know 
you've subscribed and you're thinking, well, why hasn't he uploaded any videos? That's most probably because you haven't clicked the notifications on the My Homepage. Now, please go into My Homepage and then you can actually get notifications of every time I upload a video. There we go. So that's quite, quite distant, that one. So we need to increase that now. Back through those colours, just increase that lovely purpley type of colour. And let's just put another mountain range maybe in front of that one like that. There you go. How easy is that so far? There you go. You can see just about see that. There you go. That's what we want. You can just about see that mountain range. Just put a little bit more colour to it. Just making it a little bit bluer. I'm just going to put a little bit of shadowing in onto this mountain or hillside or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't really matter. It's a bit of a, a practice-y type of fantasy painting. And you can do these paintings and sell them on craft fairs, as I've said before. There we are. Can you see that? I hope you can see what I'm doing. I hope you can. I, 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 I'm in trouble with this camera tonight. Anyway, let's increase that. A little bit of dioxazine purple and phyllo blue. And don't forget, I got a little bit of that Mars black in this corner where we darkened the top of the sky. And now I'm going to go and make this one really dark because this is an, an old mountain. He's been there for hundreds and thousands of years and he's been sitting just off that valley and there like that. And let's put a little bit of background on there like that. There we go. Let's darken that up. Let's bring that down. Lightening that up. It's picking up that colour already that we put in from the distant mountain. So you've got a nice dark edge there. And that's what we want to try and get like that and then bring that in in front let's darken that off and we can play around with the shadows and stuff on this now when it's dry just pull that through like that get that colour on your brush and just make this up just make it up. I don't know where we could put another mountain in here if you wanted to. Let's put another mountain in there like that. Yeah, a bit of phyllo blue, a bit of dioxazine purple. And this is System 3 paint that I'm using. That's the um, Dale and Roney System 3 that I'm using. Um, you can use any paint, it doesn't matter. I just thought I would do a painting with this particular brand this evening. And just wanted to see how it would flow, how it works with mediums like retarders and things but I haven't used retarders because I thought it's, it's staying quite active it's staying quite open and I'm and I'm quite impressed with this paint and um, yes quite a nice paint nice creamy consistency okay so I'm gonna get some Mars black and I'm gonna just very quickly just draw a very line a quick line just down there like that just to darken that off a bit more paint on my brush just picking up some of that purpley colour that we put in on that mountain and don't worry too much about that at the moment now I'm going to dry that again with a hairdryer because I want to start the next stage so I hope you can see that's developing quite nicely ok that's nice and dry now I want to go to the next stage and I'm getting some kitchen roll in my hand I'm picking up my number one short flat. There you go. That's that one I put the main background on with. And I'm just looking at this night sky here, and I thought, okay, let's get some, let's get some titanium white. I might have to put some more white on my palette in a minute. Let's get some titanium white, and let's just put a little bit of that down there. In fact, let's get some more white on my palette. And. Sometimes I just put little blobs of paint out. Sometimes I put bigger blobs of paint out. It depends how much paint I'm going to use. <laughs> so I did have a question the other day saying, how do you decide how much paint you use? Well, you just put out what you think you're going to use. And um, there's no rule. I, I, like to, I don't like to overload my palette. I don't like to put loads of paint on my palette because 
I don't want to waste my paint. And um, you can put them in little jars later on. You've seen those little pill boxes I use sometimes to put my paint in. You can put them in there. I want to make this a little bit bluer. So I'm going to bring some blue down and I'm pulling in from the edge like this. Mixing into that titanium white. I'm getting a little bit of that dioxazine purple down here like that. Just putting that in neat. Just getting that purple effect like that. Let's put a bit more in. There we go. Just stroking the canvas now. Just a little bit of colour. Just like that. Don't be don't be too try not to be too regimental about it. There we go. That's a nice word regimental. I like regimental. Let's get a little bit more white, a little bit of that phyllo blue onto my brush. So that's white, a little bit of phyllo blue. And let's go back into this edge now. And again try and bring it in from there like that. Bit of purple coming through on my brush now. There you go, like that. Just mix these colours together, just get them to blend together like this. Let's go in a little bit of that dioxazine purple. Let's just pull that through. This is the angle I'm sitting at, I think. It doesn't help, but it doesn't matter as long as we got the gist of it, as they say. Dioxazine purple, feel or blue mix those two together a little bit of mars black let's just darken that color up a touch let's pull that in from the edge pull it in from the edge like this nice and dark down there don't forget i still got white on my brush so it's going to blend but i don't want that too strong but i want a little bit of color i got a bit of moonlight down there so i'm just pulling this in darkening up in sections and use a smaller brush if you want to don't worry too much about that edge there on the mountain I've got plans for that I'll just pull that through like that okay let's change in my brush and going back into this other short flat that I had which has been soaking in my pot dioxazine purple and if you haven't got dioxazine purple just make a purple using a red and a blue and um, a little million blue and cardinum red is pretty good because that makes quite a dark purple you can always add a little bit of black if you wanted to um, that's what i recommend anyway and uh, i'm just going to very lightly now bring in some darker areas under this water like this blending that in Blending that in like that. Don't worry about the edge, we can sort the edge out. Blending that down like that. And again, this side. Blending that in. Little streak marks. Now, I can feel the surface of that water, that's water, the surface of that painting, getting a little bit sticky. So I'm just going to mist that very, very lightly with my fine mist atomizing bottle. There you go. And I'm just going to rub that in like this. There you go. Now I've got a little bit of movement going with that paint. I'm going to get a little bit of white onto my brush. And I'm going to, from there, I'm going to bring down a little bit of moonlight. Like that. A bit more. Just increase that a little bit. There you go. Flex on the water. A few little fleckies on the water like that. How cool is that? Okay, we don't want to do too much, do we? Putting that back in. I'm picking up my um, 
little tiny. Let me have a look at my filbert brush here because I want to darken that one mountain up a touch. It was it's a little bit too light for my liking, so I just want to I want to darken that up a bit more. Purple color like that. It's on that one edge. I'm just lighten that one edge a bit. See that a little bit better then. And I want to lighten this edge a touch. Like that. Go into this dark colour. Bring that there. Just a touch of white to it. Just to change the flavour up. I'm going to put a bit of blue in onto this mountain. Like that. A little bit blue over there. Like that. Let's darken that up. Oops, put some shadows in now. I went over that a little bit too mad then. Right, I want to darken up a couple of edges here. Like that. Get nice and dark down there. And here, I want to darken up that area. Just play, just play with this mountain. Play with these mountains and get them to look the way you want them to look. It's, all it is is different lights and shadows. You can put a couple of darker bits here and there, like as if it's rocks and things. There we go. Just play around. It's going to be quite dark down there. Play around with that until you're happy with the effect we were, we were looking to get from this painting and you can play around for ages and ages and ages if you wanted to there you go you could you could play around for ages and ages and ages i'm getting um my angled short flat i'm going to straight into a bit of mars black and bringing that there and bringing a touch of dioxazine purple to it just a touch I'm going to take my excess off and making that nice and sharp and now I'm just going to very lightly very very lightly stroke like this like as if there's loads of tiny trees there look loads of tiny trees you can bring this across then like that sharpen that up there you go and then very, very lightly, just using the tip of that. Very, very tiny trees. All little tiny birch trees and things. You can put a couple of bigger ones in if you wanted to. Bring that across then, across there. Like that. There's a little bit of light catching that land that they're sitting on. And we can put some, by pushing up this way, just on using the very tip. He's using the very tip of the brush. Just push up like that. And then again, drag through. And just make these tree shapes. That's all we're looking to do. And you can pull them down. Distant, distant trees. There we go. Or you can just make massive bushes or whatever. Just by touching the canvas like that. Just an the illusion that there's something there. That illusion that there's something there. There you go. A little bit of white. A little bit of white. A little bit of white. Just bring in that reflection then through. Just touching a couple of these trees with a small smidgen of white. Not a lot. Don't use a lot. Just look. Just get that highlight. There you go. Can you see that? Can you see the moonlight sparkling on these, on these, on these trees? Just a little tiny bit. Just a little tiny bit, there you go. A little bit of moonlight. A little bit of moonlight can go a long way. Yes. And it's free. That's why we like painting moonlight. <laughs> it's free, it really is. There we are. Now you could get a um, strip liner if you really wanted to. And let's get a bit of black onto my brush and we could try and just straighten that 
horizon line like that with a little script liner there you go not very good Clive no no doesn't matter just bring the landmass out of touch like that you get to see what I mean Could actually put swim. Little tree things there sticking up. Let's get a little bit of white. Very, very small amount of white. A little bit of that purpley colour, I think, would be good. And it's just very, very lightly. Very, very lightly now. Just put a few little lines like this across. Because my head in the way, it is. Sitting at a really awkward angle, and then let's just put a few little reflections onto this water, like that. Bit of fun, you can make this as complicated or as easy as you want it to. Really, I just thought I'd do a couple of different methods for you tonight. You practice, you can put as much detail into this as you really want it doesn't really matter this is your painting and at the end of the day this is your world that you are actually painting so it's important that you play as much as possible and I mean play because it's important that we we do play I'm picking up a little bit of I don't know what color that was I just think it's a little bit of white there was a little bit of dioxazine purple there was a small touch of black in that it's a little bit of a a grey, purpley grey colour. I'm going to use Clive's stick and I'm going to just paint in and strengthen in this moon a little bit like this. And then we're going to go into some pure white, pure titanium white. I'm not using a lot of water. You don't need to use a lot of water with this paint. This is one absolutely lovely paint to use if you can get your hands on some system 3 paint by Dale and Roney please go out and get some and uh, it reminds me very much of another brand of paint which I will be doing a lesson on shortly but this this paint is lovely for this type of method and um, it stays open quite it's a lengthy acrylic actually I was I, I'm quite surprised I'm uh, I had some of this paint sent to me and I thought yeah I'll give it a go see how I get on with it I'm quite happy quite impressed and um, I highly recommend you pop out and buy some or just buy one tube and give it a try there you go just a little bit of shadow let's get a little bit more purple on my brush just just put the man in the moon as they say, have you ever seen the man in the moon? Yeah, it was. I always thought the moon was made of cheese. I honestly did. And I found out that was true after I seen Morris on Gromit. Yes, it's Wednesdaydale. It certainly is. I always thought it was Caffilly, but I found out it was Wednesdaydale. Right, what I'm going to do now. Before I well, let's put my clive stick by there. What I'm going to do now, before I dry this off again with a hairdryer, is um, I'm going to go into some dioxazine purple, Mars black, like that. A bit of that phyllo blue. Just mix that colour together. Lovely colour. And I'm just going to darken in a section on the bottom of my canvas, just like that. Just very, very quickly and roughly. Very quickly and roughly. We'll be playing with that in one second. And you can just push up. Like this just get a little bit of roughness showing like that I'm gonna clean this off clean off <laughs> clean this off I'm gonna clean my brushes and I'm gonna dry that off and I shall be back like that okay so I've dried that off and I've cleaned my brushes now an old master of oil painting say, used to say and now let's do something really crazy do you know who I'm talking about I'm sure you do, it's Mr. Bob Ross. And if you have ever, um, if, if you've never seen his videos, then please, I urge you to go along because I watched, watched him oh, hundreds and hundreds of times throughout the 80s and 90s and even up till today. And um, 
I've actually done a series of paintings um, that I've done some of his work in acrylics. Uh, please check the iCards out. But if you've never seen him, please, I urge you to find some videos on him. Okay, I'm going to go into some Mars Black again, some Dioxazine Purple, some Phyllo Blue. And I'm loading up that angled shader like that. Now let's do something really crazy, as he used to say. Let's start there and let's just go, oh no, all the way over the painting. And oh, we've worked hard. And we've gone and destroyed all of that there. Okay. So let's bring that down like that. And let's just bring another branch up there maybe. Let's just bring that down. Don't make that, don't make it too straight. Tree, the trees are not straight, do they? Really, if you think about it, they get—they get, they're all wiggly, wonkly. And um, let's just put his foot in there like that. Now let's have a look. Let's think of some branches. Now we got to have. Let's just put the main branches in. We can play around later with the little ones. I'm not going to put too many in, but I'm just going to play with that. Don't forget, they go. There's a little bit of an arc there when they actually join to the tree. Don't ever forget that little bit. It makes a difference. What I mean is the branch, let's get a little bit of moisture onto my brush. Don't forget I haven't used a lot of water or medium mix or whatever your thinning agent is for your paints. I know because I visited David Roney's uh, website and I found out what the percentage of thinning is and it's between 30 and 45 percent normally but Hey, go and check it out and I haven't used a lot of moisture or water so let's start there and don't forget that it's always got a little bit of a thing because it grows out of the tree like that and it comes along and it makes its way and its journey across and oops oh I shouldn't have done that I went just went across my moon it doesn't matter we'll have to we'll have to sort that out won't we I didn't really want to do that it doesn't matter okay so We'll think of something. Let's put a little bit of a another little branch there like that. And let's just put another little maybe a little branch coming down like that. We can finish these off in one second. And let's put another old let's go on the side now. If I go on the side look I can make a, a thicker branch look as if it's coming from the front of the tree. There you go. So when you're doing trees, use different brushes and different patterns. There you go. I guess get some Mars black right down the back of that tree. Let's make that back of that tree really, really dark like that. And don't forget, I still got some dioxazine purple and some phyllo blue on my brush. So that's actually picking up and going into that. There you go. Now, I'm going to pick up the script lining brush. Um, this is a, a graduate range, again, from Dale and Roney. It is. And I'm thinning down now. I'm thinning down the paint now with a lot of water. Um, trying to keep within that 30% rule, which is quite difficult because you don't know, unless you've measured this out, what 30% is. 30% of what? How long is a bit of string? Depends how long it is. <laughs> so, yes, yeah, always be mindful. And let's just bring that up and put in a few little tiny little branches like this and another little one going off in the background like that now if it's not flowing for you use a little bit more water and don't put a lot of pressure on these brushes yeah if it doesn't work for you use a little bit of flow improver use a little bit of retarder whatever you've got I suggest you go and buy some mediums from wherever you want to buy them can buy them from my website which is www.clays5art.co.uk you can go to the art store or you can buy whatever product you want there's so many different products out there so many wonderful products out there and they're all equally as good but you need to find which actual brand works for you
Today I'm talking about the Dale and Roney brand System 3, which is the acrylic paint. But you might use another brand. There we are. Whatever works best for you. And of whatever you can afford. That is the important thing, I think. That is the important thing, is whatever you can afford is the right one for you. There you go, looks a bit... These, these things got a tendency of growing. So be careful when you do things like this. Or you're gonna end up quite easily on a big tree and leaves and things that are going to take over your, your canvas yes now we that's not a problem we're okay with this this is old rickety old tree i'm just giving you an example i am going to pick up a little bit of whatever blue that was i'm going to mix that in just making a lighter gray doesn't really matter what color it is now i'm just going to pick up a bit of moonlight just on the very edge of this tree like this very very lightly you can lighten it a little bit that's a bit too light right you can go a little bit darker you can be a little bit lighter whatever you want to do however you want this light to actually pick up on this tree you can do that and it's important you play with colors as well if this is the first painting you've done then it's very important that you actually play around and pick up think a light as well think a light there's a little bit of light gonna go all the way along that branch like that and there's gonna be a light gonna go down that branch as well like that not all light is white is it so don't go put in don't go put in like straight titanium white right down because that looks really harsh it's just a reflection of color really isn't it is light white hmm that's a thing isn't it it's a thing that i was always i've always thought about is light actually white or is it just reflecting what it's hitting there you go so the color of the tree is actually being hit by light but it's reflecting color the bright brightness of the color that the tree is actually made out of there we are you will understand what i mean because i've confused myself <laughs> And that is not difficult, but I do that on uh, loads of occasions. There you go. Just sharpening that edge up there like that. Okay, now I think what we could do... What we could do is get a little bit of black and let's put a few bats maybe. There's little bats there flying around the sky or you can get a little bit of white and you can make one of these little shooting stars whatever you want it doesn't matter does it how's that looking that's looking pretty good and quite like that <laughs> okay I'm, I'm just playing i'm having fun i'm picking up i'm gonna pick up actually one of my favorite um, foliage brushes this is a natural bristle brush and these are available actually on my website um, if you want to pop along in my brush collection um, I'm just picking up into that gray like that I like these brushes because they they're very random I don't know if you've heard me say that before but they're quite randomly color uh, randomly patterns on color and I'm just going to pick up a few little highlights just on that edge there like that but I'm going to go back into this dioxazine purple Mars black phyllo blue let's just use it up now let's just change the flavor up a bit let's just 
change the flavor up a bit let's just get a little bit of white just want a little bit, little bit of color not much a little bit of color color to it I don't I, I, I gotta be careful I don't overdo this there we go I don't want to do too much color but I want to pick up a little bit of moonlight just on this bottom edge there like that but I've got to be careful I don't overdo it otherwise it can be an absolute nightmare because that's where the light is coming from there just pick up just the tops of this little bits of grassy type of thing there let's go back into a bit of that darker color now and this bit of bluer let's put a little bit of blue in there let's go with a bit of mars black because it's going to be quite dark down there so i'll pick them up a little bit of blue you can see there's a little bit of blue showing this is going to be in complete shadow but we're going to have a little bit of light reflecting on the back of that tree we can have a little bit of light reflecting down here as well there we go just a touch very very subtle just a touch just a touch let's go in with a bit more black and i'm here and there now just to darken up a couple of areas and how are we looking can you see yes looks a bit moonlightly 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 that's what I said. Okay. Where did I put my strip liner? There it is. Again, let's just go into this colour. Like that. A little bit of light. Let's paint some light. Let's just paint some light. There you go. Paint in some light. Some feathers. Little, uh, not feathers. What am I talking about? I don't know. A bit grass. A few grassies. A few grass bits. There we are. A few grass bits. There we are. Just a few bits of grass. Just picking up, poking little heads out. And the light of the moon is just actually catching them like a that. And I'm going to get myself a little detail brush. Now I'm going to go into some Mars black. I'm twisting my brush. I'm going to look at this moon. I'm going to pick up my Clive stick. And at the same time getting some kitchen paper and I'm going to go like this and I'm going to put a little circle there like that just in brush loading my brush but as I'm loading my brush I'm twisting the brush getting this to a nice sharp point I'm going to squish <laughs> it doesn't want to marry me tonight. I'm just going to make a little carrot like that. There you go. A little tiny bit of moisture. Uh, not a lot. Just a little bit. Not a lot. Just a little bit. There you are. Let's make him a little bit fatter. It is. I wonder what we're going to be painting now. There you go. I got a bit too much moisture on my brush. I want to make him a little bit fatter than that. That's a bit better. A little bit fatter. A little bit fatter. Bringing that down again. Just put in a little bit of a fan there like that. Getting this to a nice sharp point. I'm just going to put a little bit of a shoulder on him. There you go. I'm just going to go, make that a little bit bigger, there you go, now I'm going to, i got to get a very small, fine, detail brush, and I've got money here somewhere, found it, <laughs> this is a zero, yes, watch this, a little bit of purpley white just on the tip of my brush there's a very very fine very very fine about six hairs on there and I'm just gonna very very lightly 
put in two beauty eyes. A little bit of a thing like that. Just for a bit of fun. <laughs> he said, yes. It's the smallest owl I painted this year. But he is there. Looks a bit like Batman. But you know what I mean. It looks like a cat. It might be a bird cat. <laughs> These are all about fun. It doesn't matter what they look like. Just darken his eyes a little bit like that. But you can just about see them. I hope you can. Can you see them? Let's have a look. <laughs> and there we go. Let's put a little bit of moonlight on the bird. Let's put a little bit of moonlight reflecting just on his one edge there like that. Look, a little bit of little bit of light just down the one edge. I've gone all throaty. There they are. <laughs> there we are. Looks like a, a little midnight hour or dusk or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call that one done today. So my name is Clive from clivesart.co.uk and as I said in the iCards you, you've got the, the midnight sky, you've got the birds, you've got the water. I've done all this type of thing today, but I, but I put them all together. Yes, I have a bit of fun. We can do that again, I'm sure. So um, thank you very much. Have a good day, good week, a good month, a good year, because I don't know exactly when you're going to be watching this. As time is relative on YouTube. But from me and, um, and Flossy the Owl, <laughs> I'll see you next time. So grab your brush, have a great time. And don't forget to click subscribe. Visit Clive5R.co.uk